Han Chang uh, joins us now from Beijing. He's an associate professor of astronomy at Beijing Normal University. Thanks so much for being with us. Let's talk about how all of this uh, latest effort fits into China's overall space program. Can you kind of give us a, a thumbnail sketch of that? Right. Um, so, so this uh, this new cargo sh cargo uh, craft is the uh, first batch of the uh, of a new generation one. It's uh, it's improved. Uh, improve one and it marks the uh, the beginning of what's called the uh, application and development phase of the space station that means the space station from now on is construction is finished and it will be run as a national laboratory for science development and technology uh, development just as well um, so that's uh, that, that's the uh, that's the lower orbit part of things and then in the uh, in the future you will see a lot more interesting uh, program coming up um, in the uh, Chinese space program for example uh, there's going to be a, a lunar research station there will be a return mission from Mars uh, going to the outer solar system going even to the edge of the solar system that will all happen in a 20, 20 30 sort of time scale so, so that'll be a, uh, something to look forward to yeah, and if you go to Wikipedia and look up the Chinese space program, you'll find this entry. It says, China has one of the most active space programs in the world. Um, we just basically heard that in this report. And, and it's interesting, this telescope, it's going to have a field view about 300 times larger than the Hubble telescope. So we're going to learn a lot more about the universe, aren't we? Right. So the reason why you want to do that is because uh, it's called the it means sky survey. That means it can capture things that just happens to explode for a short period of time. Um, otherwise, if you have a very narrow field view, you have to know something is happening to point at the correct direction. The reason why you want to ca catch this kind of a temporary explosion is, is because they're the most energetic event in the universe that tell you a lot more about physics and astronomy. So having a very capable telescope up there not only have a very f wide field of view, but also have a very, very wide range of frequencies they can observe from uh, infrared all the way up to, uh, to near uh, ultraviolet. Uh, that gives you a capability to basically capture things in the universe that might be interesting that, that you wouldn't notice otherwise. So that's, a, that's, that's the main goal for that telescope. As someone who teaches astronomy, um, you already touched on this. There's long-term plans uh, aiming at the moon, Mars. We're talking about the telescope. What excites you the most about the space program right now? It's actually the uh, development of the rockets. So all of these programs, um, we have all, so, so many things we could do. Uh, we want to build. We, Personally, we, I want to send a, a gravitational wave detector to the moon. And for that to, to happen, uh, the rocket delivery capabilities is the most important thing. And right now, uh, the new generation of rocket is being designed. Long March 9 is being designed. The uh, Long March 5, having a new variant that can go to the moon, is also being uh, proposed and, and being, being finalized. And, and in the future, uh, there's a, a whole host of, of low-cost launching capabilities that are being tested out uh, by a, a whole, whole host of, of, of different uh, state-owned and, uh, and completely private uh, companies. So, so I look forward to, to see what kind of solutions to come up that could, uh, that could potentially reduce the cost of going into space so our payloads can get launched uh, effectively. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. You know, uh, here in the United States, in Washington, Back in 2011, Congress banned any cooperation between the United States and China when it comes to space. Uh, I've talked to some folks uh, who are pretty active in, in those circles in China who are really disappointed about that. Um, is, is the U.S. missing out? I mean, it, it, this is one area where we've seen cooperation in the past with Russian cosmonauts and, and U.S. astronauts. Uh, is it a source of disappointment, would you say? Um, so. so from a practical point of view, China actually benefited from that uh, because if you can't just buy things off off the shelf, uh, you, you kind of have to develop it. And then, uh, so from that point of view, China's space program has its own complete uh, production chain, even from the raw material is sourced domestically. Um, so that that actually I think benefited China. And in terms of collaborations, of course, you don't want to have the people doing exactly the same things over and over again. If for the good of humanity, of course, it would be better if everybody put resources so we push forward doing the, uh, to the cutting edge all the time. And, and, but if that's not, not possible, then it's not possible. I mean, in, in the, part, the United States is willing to, to, to uh, collaborate with the Soviet Union because Soviet Union is so far ahead of them. Uh, 
before, uh, and, and they have all the respect, and uh, they, they saw China would, uh, would contribute nothing, they, they would learn nothing from China um, in the past, but I don't know what, whether that attitude would change in the future um, if China gradually sort of uh, um, catch up. Uh, so I don't know, things, things might, change, um, might change sooner than we, than we expect, see how it goes. Uh, one can hope. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it.